Hi, everybody. This is Spiro Theodore from Churn Zero. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to meet with me. Hopefully, everybody is uh, staying safe during these, uh, these crazy times. So what we're going to talk about today, um, it's going to be a short 20-minute webinar uh, really about automation um, and how that pertains to customer success teams. So as you can see, my name is Spiro Theodore. I'm one of the account executives here at Churn Zero, and uh, I've been here for almost one year on the dot. Uh, prior to Churn Zero, um, I worked as a CSM myself for a large organization for about three years. So I've uh, got a pretty unique perspective on what it's like to you know, not have a tool like Churn Zero, and then to also have the privilege of actually implementing um, Churn Zero. So what we wanna focus on today is automation as it pertains to customer success professionals. So we're gonna talk a little bit about you know, how customer data can be collected and leveraged, how we can systematically manage the customer life cycle, and that means, you know, across life cycle stages, going from onboarding to adoption, expansion, all the way up to renewal. And then, of course, you know, triggering communications at the right time. You know, everyone wants to deliver a prescriptive or unified customer experience across their install base. And we're going to talk about that through the lens of a few different kinds of teams, kinds of organizations. And before we jump into all that good stuff, I just wanted to start at a very high level. Um, you know, what Churn Zero thinks of uh, when it comes to automation. Um, you know, customer success teams have a lot going on. You know, they've got to go from onboarding all the way up to engagement, renew renewal, and advocacy. Um, regardless, most companies that Churn Zero meets with, um, everyone wants to automate at least some part of their business. Uh, no one SaaS company operates the same. Uh, no one customer success team is going to operate uh, exact same to another. So automation is going to mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, dependent on industry, company size, uh, team structure. But we think that just about every team out there in some way, shape or form should be able to automate some portion of their business in order to drive better results. So why automation is important. Uh, and why are we all here? You know, if your team is growing rapidly, you need to operate more efficiently. If your team is experiencing a churn issue, maybe automation can help improve those numbers. Maybe you're looking for more upsell opportunities. All great concepts in which customer success automation can help. When it comes to scalability, you know, the best way to grow your business is to find those highly repeatable tasks and automate as much as you can. One of my favorite stories here at Churn Zero is with a company called Fiscal Note in the DC area. Um, when they bought Churn Zero, they scaled, um, they increased their account, account load uh, 6X while only increasing CSMs 2X. So they went from something crazy like 600 accounts to 3000 accounts and only 10 to 20 CSMs because they were able to automate all the repeatable tasks their, their CSMs were managing and allowed them to scale the business very quickly in only 18 months. Other things to think about, um, you know, driving desired outcomes. You know, automation, like I said, is gonna mean something different to everybody in this room. One thing that I really like to hone in on is, hey, how can we track what our customers are doing? And is there an easy way to be notified when they're not doing what we want them to do? whether they haven't achieved a milestone, they haven't achieved a certain metric, they're falling behind in the onboarding process. Those are all outcomes we wanna monitor and track in real time. And of course, early warning signs. Uh, it's very difficult to know when an account is at risk or when there's a potential upsell on the table or if a company is falling fall behind in a big initiative you're working on with them. Automation is able to bring a lot of those uh, rather hidden inflection points front and center so teams are able to correct those processes uh, but at the end of the day you know it's not magic there's no pill you take there's no rabbit you pull out of your hat before really understanding what areas of the business i'm able to automate uh, we always recommend you know taking a holistic view of your current state uncovering those bottlenecks and then finding areas of improvement and start thinking about what that desired future state might look like. Hey, if I could automate X, Y, and Z, what would we, what else would we be able to do? So you might ask yourself, 
you know, what you actually can automate or what terms you're bringing to the table. This is by no means an all-inclusive list. These are four things that come to mind quite frequently when I meet with prospective customers. First and foremost, you know, any sort of handoffs within your organization, whether it's, you know, sales to customer success, customer success to support, maybe during the onboarding process, it goes from professional services then to an account manager. Um, we wanna be able to streamline as many of those handoffs as possible. That way the correct customer data is being uh, captured properly and shared with the appropriate teams without any issues or gaps. Second to that, you know, the onboarding and implementation process, as we all know, is probably the most important piece to any customer lifecycle stage. If the onboarding and implementation goes wrong, makes it very hard to maintain that customer. Uh, adoption is gonna be difficult, um, even more challenging expanding and renewing that customer. So we wanna think about what areas of my onboarding process might I be able to automate? Could be something as simple as an automated welcome email. It could be more a little, a little bit more sophisticated and tracking and making sure certain things are happening at certain times at a specific milestone. Uh, we also want to make sure that as an uh, overall, products are being adopted and the user experience is quite fluid. So whether you're just monitoring key accounts and seeing how they're using your tool, and maybe that triggers some sort of automation, or maybe we want to really hone in on the user experience. For those of you in this room that have uh, free users, trial users, different tiers of pricing, um, you know, one of our, one of my favorite case studies is with an organization called RFP360. Um, their business model is to go out, get people to try their software and nurture those users up until a point where they become paying customers. Fantastic idea for automating that portion of the business, increasing the free users into paying users. And last but not least, customer engagement, customer communications. Most organizations we talk to before joining Churn Zero really struggle to deliver a prescriptive customer experience because data is not readily available and it's there's no way to intuitively fuel any of those communication efforts. Uh, what we see is a lot of organizations, you know, they'll leverage their CRM, maybe their spreadsheets. The lucky folks might get usage information and see how their teams are utilizing their tool. And while that's great, it's still very manual because it requires you to log into Salesforce or HubSpot, see what's going on, log into your BI tool, better understand what customers are doing when the last time I spoke to them, what message makes the most sense, and then manually deliver that content. Um, we're able to automate all those different interactions. That way, not only can you operate more efficiently, but we're also gonna free up more time. So that way your enterprise customers still receive the care they need. And then the lower hanging fruit, the SMB, the mid-market accounts, we wanna make sure they still receive that unified experience and same level of care, even if it's not a personalized email from their CSM. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a couple of different scenarios, you know, how a high touch team might envision leveraging automation to scale their CS practice, you know, how a lower touch or tech touch team might do the same. Um, we're also gonna talk about some best practices um, that churns Geo recommends. And before we go down that road, I just wanna give everybody a couple things to think about because before you even go down, or go down the path of automating any of these processes, these are questions you really need to better understand. Um, so first off, you know, how many customers do you have? How many CSMs? What does that account look like? Does each, per, each member of the team have 10 accounts, 50 accounts, 150 accounts? Um, does that vary based on, you know, company size or life cycle stage? You know, do the larger accounts get more attention? Do you spend more time in the first 90 days than the back half of the contract? All things to be mindful of. Uh, you also want to start thinking about overall, you know, what accounts might be receiving more attention than others and why? Nine times out of 10, it's somewhat segment driven. The high paying customers, you know, they're gonna be the top priority. Maybe after that, you've got, you know, the, the scenarios where you're living outside of your inbox and you're being extremely reactive. Uh, typically, there's a whole other segment you might not be thinking about that might not have any interactions. And those folks are typically the highest risk for either, you know, contracting their services with you or a dreadful non-renewal when that time comes. 
But outside of those things, I want, also want everyone to start thinking about um, you know, how they interact with their customers and why they're interacting with their customers. So, you know, everyone has, you know, health check calls, QBRs, EBRs, renewal conversations. The majority of those meetings are kind of already, you know, set in stone, more or less. You've got, you know, pre-scheduled QBRs happening every 90 days. What I want everyone to start thinking about is why else would I proactively pick up the phone or write a personalized email to one of my customers? Um, what's that aha moment in which I need to intervene? That question in itself is really going to help us better understand to what degree and how automation can benefit our group. And lastly, what level of effort is required by each one of your CSMs in order for them to see value in your solution and how long does it take to get there? Now, don't worry about answering all those questions right now in your head. Um, this is more or less a takeaway, but I do want to uh, set the stage and do a quick poll. So I'm going to give everybody a minute or two. Uh, there should be a poll coming out very uh, soon. Uh, basically, you know, is your team more of a high touch team, more of a low touch team, or do you have kind of a blended approach or, uh, you know, a mix of both, whether that's different companies or different stages in the life cycle? Looks like we've got a good bit of answers coming in right now. We'll give it about uh, maybe another 30 seconds, and then we will uh, share some of the results and we're going to continue the conversation. Looks like right now um, we've got 36% of responses um, have more or less high touch teams. We've got 11% uh, in the lower touch range or tech touch. And uh, as I presumed, um, over half of all uh, folks that responded to the poll have selected both, uh, which is great, and, and and that's very much in line with, uh, with 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 Churn Zero strengths, because what we've done is we've gone out and we've built a tool that's specifically uh, designed to serve both. Some companies build something for a high touch or a low touch team. Churn Zero has taken an agnostic approach. That's why we've got a very diverse client base, and that's why we're able to typically address multiple segments within each one of your organizations. So let's talk about these high touch scenarios. So, you know, high touch, you know, a buzzword. Um, basically, you know, if you're helping customers through a human level across various stages and there's a high degree of uh, participation, um, and maybe there's like that one CSM that's got a great relationship with that account and everything is very personalized, you're meeting frequently, you're definitely going to fall into this bucket. Now, when you think about automation in general, as I mentioned at the top of the call, automation is gonna mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. If you take a high touch CSM with five enterprise accounts and then a lower touch CSM with 150 accounts and you ask them, hey, what would you like to automate? You're going to get wildly different answers based on those two distinct scenarios. Three areas that I really think about and things that I always harp on when I meet with a high touch team is alerts, customer outcomes, and milestone tracking. You know, we don't want Churn Zero potentially sending a bunch of content or emails, a lot of automated stuff to go into your customer. We don't want to lose that personalized touch. So what those folks typically do is they take advantage of some really cool features in our platform. Um, and even though it sounds really simple, for a high touch team, an alert might be all that you need. Rather than, hey, Churn Zero, create a task for me and send an email to a customer, just let me know when something happens. That means we can set up a rule that says, hey, we want to track how your customers are utilizing your product. And when usage around really important features falls below a threshold that you decide, an alert like this can be automatically delivered to the account holder. So in this case, customers are trending down in usage, engagement is dropping. That's the, that's the report we're pulling out of churn zero. And this is the actual message that is sent directly to the CSM. These alerts can be sent in email, text, Slack, even in Churn Zero itself. We simply want to point the CSM in the right direction when something happens. That way they can go back to the person they know very well, leverage that personal relationship, and add value very quickly. But alerts aren't going to be enough. A lot of our high touch customers also rely on our customer journeys to better track milestones and customer outcomes. 
I think of customer journeys as more or less life cycle based task management, um, kind of a broad term. So to make it really simple for everybody, a high touch team might want to consider a tool that allows them to not only manage timely high priority tasks the CS team is responsible for, and at the same time, tracking customer outcomes. Um, I know when I was a CSM, one of the most dreadful scenarios was walking out of an engagement session, especially during the first 90 days, and having to say to myself on that call ride home, hey, I hope everybody was listening. I hope I had an impactful presentation. Churn Zero has recognized that problem across most SaaS organizations, and we've added some really neat features. So not only can you use Churn Zero very much like a project management tool as far as assigning tasks on the minute to anyone in your organization, we also want to track achievements. Are your customers doing what you want them to do in the time period that you decide? So this milestone is a 21-day pro project. And during these 21 days, these achievements are things the customer is going to do. These tasks are things that the CSM themselves are responsible for. We have the ability to track each one of these achievements, each one of these tasks, and in real time, notify you, hey, you haven't done this, this task is two weeks late, or hey, your customer has not completed this implementation worksheet in the first five days. So now we're still leveraging alerts, we're just not so much tracking you know, things like usage, we're really honing in on hyper important phases in the customer lifecycle to ensure that these achievements are being completed in real time along with the tasks that way this customer can move through milestone one in 21 days and jump right into the next process now on the other side of the coin you know the low touch or the tech touch um, this is much more in line with my days as a csm i had 150 accounts um, i was managing salespeople. Um, you could say it was the wild west uh, but once i got tool that had these capabilities, I was able to do quite a bit. Uh, but to kind of set the stage, you know, I put low touch and tech touch in the same category because a lot of these folks face the same problems. Whether, you know, there's no human interaction and everything is automated, or maybe a CSM just has such a high volume of accounts that they're really only able to focus on the top 20% and the people that actually come to them and flood their inbox. So by leveraging you know, lower touch or tech touches, we're able to you know, rely less on human interaction, uh, less costly, but also still drive the same desired outcomes. And the way we do that in Churn Zero is by a series of in-app communication methods, really tracking the overall user experience, and then of course being able to put together all repeatable processes that can be automated you know, if I always say, if, if you find yourself, you know, making the same phone call more than three times in one day or sending the same email three times in one day, let's automate that for you, take it off your plate, and now you can be more strategic and add value across your entire customer base. So a little bit more about, you know, the low touch and tech touch scenarios. So, you know, the first thing I mentioned, in-app content and guides. I've got two examples here. This one on the right. This is essentially an automated in-app message that can be delivered via Churn Zero through your application. So the next time they log in, they can see a really helpful note delivered to them, sent by their CSM, and include an interactive video. So maybe this is for a marketing automation company. Someone hasn't logged in in a long time. The next time they log in, we're gonna have a very impactful video that not only mentions the fact that they um, haven't logged in in a while, but now we can start adding content and maybe get them to use that feature more than they have in the past. Turn Zero also has a concept of walkthroughs or product tours, not so much a message, more or less a guide pointing you in the right direction. So as you can see faintly in the background here, it's the uh, a ghost of a SaaS application in the background, but this is a brand new user, Tate. Tate just logged into Marketing Pony for the first time, He'll be greeted kindly. He'll receive his CSM's contact information. And I bet if he clicks on take the tour here, Churn Zero is gonna automatically point out all the different features and functions he should be aware of. This is a great way to maintain engagement as well as 
uh, automate that process via in-app content. We also want to focus on automated emails and tasks. While the messages and the guides are going to be great, we still want to allow these teams to have a little bit of some additional uh, personalization. So what I have here is a templated email that's an automatic step in one of our playbooks. And it's essentially saying, hey, you've got a renewal coming up pretty soon. You're not using the email feature in our tool. Check out this really helpful ebook. Hope to hear from you soon. We can do the exact same thing with tasks. What a lot of our lower touch segments will do is they will build out an entire process that consists of in-app messages, walkthroughs, emails, timely tasks, even escalations to other people on the team. And that's a fantastic way to ensure that all of your customers are receiving the same level of care, even if you don't have the time and bandwidth to personalize each one of those points. So what does Churnzio recommend? Um, and it falls very much in line with the poll results, uh, both. The majority of companies we work with, to some extent, have a high touch and a low touch model. Um, and I wanna share with you a success story from Mineral Tree. Mineral Tree is a 100 employee AP automation company uh, located right outside of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and they're a great story, great example of how a team can leverage automation to uh, free up time for the enterprise folks and also uh, maintain engagement with your lower paying customers. So essentially some of the challenges that Mineral Tree faced before coming to Churn Zero was they did not have a platform uh, to identify accounts that needed extra attention. They lacked visibility into things like customer health and they lacked the ability to kind of look customer A compared to customer B, who's doing better? It was almost impossible. They did have tools in place and I'm sure most of the folks on the line here have similar tools. They were using a marketing automation tool and a CRM tool to get the job done. While that can do probably 50, 60% of what a CSM needs, the remaining core uh, use cases are always going to be lacking, no matter how much you hack like a Salesforce and a Tableau together. Um, but lastly, you know, customers were sent or CSMs were essentially living out of their inbox. They knew what accounts needed the most help. Unfortunately, they did not know what everybody else was doing. So they found themselves being very reactive. So what did they do? Right out of the gate, they introduced churn scores. That's our version of health scores. Essentially, by flipping a switch, when we went live, they immediately knew who was at risk, who was in the kind of in that middle ground, and who is a great candidate for a potential upsell opportunity. And that information is not just available in churn zero, one of our themes, customer success everywhere. That sort of information can be disseminated across the organization via tools like Salesforce and Slack. What they also did was customer segmentation. This allowed, this allowed them to effortlessly organize all their customers, dividing accounts and, uh, by certain attributes and making sure the right accounts are going down the right path. So if you're an enterprise customer, you go through the enterprise journey. If you're a self-service customer, we've got playbooks that are gonna nudge you along the way to ensure you're doing what you should be doing in that tool. And lastly, they finally had a workplace for the CS team to work. Now, most of us before buying a customer success tool, we were stringing together Salesforce, Outreach, Spreadsheets, Google Data, Data Studios. Um, now, the team has got a tool really built for them in mind. They've got real-time dashboards and alerts, so they know when health drops, they know when there's a potential upsell, they know when an enterprise customer has fallen behind in the onboarding process. I want to talk real quickly about the overall impact that they had. Essentially, they automated as many of their repeatable processes as they could using our plays. This allowed the team to free up more of their time and offer high touch service across each account without significantly having to increase their headcount. What they essentially did was they kept the personalized high touch uh, interactions for the top 20% of their business everyone else they relied on automation and let automation do the heavy lifting up into a point where automation might not work so maybe they put them through a really 
uh, granular uh, playbook to guide them through the user experience, add value, point them in the right direction. And it wasn't until they hit that wall and the behaviors were still not doing so great, customers were not seeing value, health was down. Uh, once the automation failed, that's when they were able to interject. So overall, they had greater visibility into their entire account base. Um, they were able to improve upsell and uh, retention numbers. Uh, they were able to manage each CSM could then carry more accounts. And this has put them in a great place to really disrupt the AP automation space and continue to grow with churn zero. And that concludes the end of my presentation. Um, wanted to keep it short. I know everyone is uh, is really busy, but if there are questions, feel free to send them over. Um, I can, uh, it looks like there's one question from Dave. Dave, there might be audio issues. I can send you the recording afterwards, but if there are any other questions that I can address, feel free to send them into the question box right now and um, be happy to, to answer them. All right, I don't see any questions. Uh, I did see the thank you from Beck. Thanks for joining. Oh, hold on, there might be questions. One second. There are a lot of tools out there. Why churn zero? Fantastic question. Um, so first and foremost, churn zero uh, specifically went out and built a very lightweight turnkey solution. Um, we are probably uh, one of the most powerful and robust tools out there that does not require a full-time administrator, uh, very little dev work, um, does not require an entirely heavy lift. Um, so what we've done was we've you know, built 50 plus native integrations. Um, we've made it really easy for customers to you know, leverage usage data so they can um, you know, incorporate that into their processes. And we've done it at a fraction of the cost from some of the other companies in our space. So while Churn Zero competes with you know, the enterprise CS tools, more or less, I would say we can still do just about everything that one would need, but at a fraction of the cost. Lower software fees, much shorter implementation time, no need to hire a dedicated resource. Uh, can this be integrated with Dynamics? Yes, absolutely. Dynamics 365 is one of the supported CRMs we integrate with. If you go to churnzero.net, I believe uh, backslash integrations, uh, you will be able to view a page for all the different integrations we have on there. Uh, there's 50 plus, Dynamics 365 is one of them. And what is your average time to value or onboarding time frame? Um, on average, we uh, take probably, I would say, six, 60 to 90 days, um, and that's uh, two phases. So meaning we have, you know, there's two, there's two points in the process. There's implementation and configuration. I would say on average, to get the system up and running, to get all of your tools integrated, and to get the data into turn zero, that would take roughly 30 days. From there, you're gonna move over from implementation to the, your own customer success manager. That's gonna be the dedicated individual that's with you the entire time you're a customer. And they are gonna be the ones to help you set up your churn scores, your playbooks, your segments, lots of handholding. Um, so roughly 60 days, that does vary. You know, Smaller teams, much faster. If you have 300 CSMs, that might be a little bit uh, of a longer process just based on you know, training schedules alone. But 60 days, I think, is the median time to get insurance zero customer up and running. I uh, see another question in here. Um, how do you feel your product compares to Gainsight? Um, fantastic question. Um, you know, truth be told, sounds corny. I think of Churn Zero as a lightweight Gainsight. Um, yes, they were the leaders in the space, but that doesn't mean you know the first is always the best. Um, our tool requires far less customizations. Um, it's implemented in a much shorter time frame. 
uh, does not require the full-time administrator, um, and it's a, a fraction of the cost. Uh, there's no such thing as a churn zero admin. Uh, if I were to go on Indeed right now, I could probably find at least 20 or 30 Gainsight admin open recs. So it's really about total cost of ownership. Um, and at the same time, you know, we can do almost just about everything Gainsight can. If there are any follow-up questions, um, feel free to send them my way. Everyone should have my email address. Um, I can, of course, also just type it right in here. So if anyone wants to take a look at a demo, they have a specific questions. Hey, Spiro, do you integrate with this? Hey, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what is the pricing? All that good stuff, uh, be more than happy to accommodate. So that should, uh, that should all be in there right now. And that about concludes the time. Thank everybody. Thanks everybody for going a little bit later than anticipated. It's been a pleasure. Uh, any questions you have, feel free to send them my way. Um, or if you just want to go to Churn Zero, request a demo, be more than happy to accommodate. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.